Post-match chat with chaps for that Millwall podcast where it finished at the Den. Millwall 1, Middlesbrough 3. Some of the best football, if I'm honest, that I've seen since I can remember. Um, undone by some sloppy defending, lapses of concentration at the back and some poor finishing. Saw us find ourselves on the wrong side of what I have to say was a very exciting and entertaining game. Um, it's, it's a shame, it really is. And I, I feel like our performance warranted more than the result we got but uh credit to Middlesbrough and um unfortunately as I say some sloppy defending and some lapses of concentration on our part uh were the big differences so uh going into the game so a lot was made of Middlesbrough their game against Chelsea in the week they played Villa the week before um the amount of injuries they had and all of that's true okay all of that is true um, and they had more injured bodies than we did. However, what I would say is we had seven injuries, two. And on top of that, we have seven injuries in a much smaller, smaller squad. And Muddersbury this week have gone out and bought two new players, right? And this is the difference, okay? You know, the, to bring in the likes of Finazaz and Luke Ayling and can put them into the starting lineup is is ultimately the, the differences in this league. Uh, to be able to field the strength of side that Middlesbrough did, albeit maybe tired legs out there, and then to have the likes of Marcus Force coming back from injury, obviously scored the third, we'll get onto that, to have the likes of Matt Crooks and Hayden Hackney on the bench, they had more depth than we did. Let, let's be fair, the only proper full pro on the bench today that was probably fully fit. In actual fact, no, I was about to say Murray Wallace, but he's just come back from injury. Casper Denor has come back from injury. Norton Cuffey, was he fit? And then obviously Romain Essa, it's, it's difficult to call him a, a fully fledged professional when he's played literally a you know, handful of substitute appearances. So the squad is very, very thin at the moment. And look, I'm not going to get into um, the club's finances, but I think... I think Edwards needs some help, to be honest. And I think we need to try and do some business in the January transfer window. Anyway, come on, let's get onto it. So um, we we, um, we we start the game uh, with this following 11. So, and to be honest, the 11 picked itself in reality. Um, it, it didn't really, it was just kind of how we were going to set up. So Sarkic in goal, a back three. So Danny Mack kept his place on the right-hand side of a back three. Uh, Cooper on the left and Harding in the middle. Cooper with the armband. Uh, the two wing-backs uh, were Ryan Longman on the right-hand side. Again, that was the change that happened against Leicester, um, I believe. And then Joe Bryan um, on the left wing-back position. George Honeyman and Billy Mitchell kept their places in the centre apart. George Savile will return from suspension in the next game. And then a front three, as I say, unless you include Romain Essay in the mix, picked itself Zian Fleming and Duncan Watmore, either side of Mr. Kevin Nisbet, as we learned that Tom Bradshaw is out with a hamstring injury for between four and six weeks. And then, of course, we have a Maku out as well. So we didn't have a recognised striker on the bench, a recognised forward player on the bench, um, unless you include SA. But I think one of the problems that SA's got is I don't really know where his position is, to be honest. Um, but look, we kick off and the first... 30 to 40 minutes was some of the best football I have ever seen us play. And I'm not exaggerating. And I think a lot of you are probably with me on this. We were a joy to watch. And it was a really weird thing that we would create chance after chance after chance. And I'll talk through a few in a moment. But it almost it always felt that we'd create another one. Like we were, we were cutting them open easily. We were on top. We were pressing well. And the problem is, if you have a spell like that for such a period of a game, which is 40 minutes, you have to take the chances. And unfortunately, we only took one. Um, the goal that we did score, which was a super finish uh, from uh, Joe Bryan. Joe Bryan is uh, definitely going to be uh, mentioned quite a lot here, which is on 10 minutes. And we could have been easily ahead before then. Um, but some really good play playing out from the back. And it wasn't. A lot of teams come to the den, and I would never want to be this team, but they sort of fanny around with it at the back. And, you know, it, it's it's playing at the back for playing at the back's sake. 
Whereas what we do now is the players almost look quite comfortable, um, particularly in the, the pressing style that Middlesbrough have, to just basically pass it along the bat line until the right opportunity and the right angle uh, presents itself. This happens. We finally get the ball to, to Honeyman. Honeyman sprays a super ball over to Longman, who for most of the first half was always open and was an outlet and had a very, very good first half, Ryan Longman. Longman puts the ball into the box. It's a good ball, but it finds itself, um, you know, on the penalty spot. Fleming just sort of nudges it back to, to Brian. And Brian, with his weaker foot, just volleys it into um, into the goal, into the side. The goalkeeper's left. Keeper, no chance. It's a super finish. We're 1-0 up and we absolutely deserve it. And it's, it's um, as I say, the first 30 minutes was... Everything was going right for us. You know, we were playing really, really well. We had you know, the crowd were buzzing. It was it was fantastic yesterday for that. Um, we have a number of other chances. We had a chance where some really nice link up play between Brian and Fleming puts Watmore in. Watmore then forces a save from the goalkeeper if it bounces off their defender from the resulting corner. Cooper has to score. This is the chance that we have to take to go two 0 up. And for me, if we do that. The game's completely different. Um, the uh, corner comes in and Cooper, you know, I'm pretty sure it was his left foot, within the six-yard area, with his feet, he's got to score. He hits the bar um, and it, it, it's, a, it's make no mistake, it's a massive chance and we should be making it 2-0 there. Um, they have the next chance and credit to Sarkic because some, some nice play from them. Um couple of sort of 50 50 tackles that they they uh win um and then the ball finds itself it's, it's rogers who a nice little jink uh no it's azaz to rogers sorry uh nice little jink through rogers one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper sarkic comes out spreads himself and makes a very very good save um we then have another really good opportunity where playing out from the back from Middlesbrough's perspective, they get it wrong. Mitchell uh, anticipates it. He steps into it. He runs onto it. He drives, he drives, he plays in Watmore. And then Watmore shoots into the side netting. Just another example of a chance. And there were a number of chances in that first half. Um, but that was that was another one. But then they take the lead. And this is, this is the frustrating thing. Um, so they take the lead um, on... Sorry, what am I talking about? I don't take the lead. They equalise. I haven't scored at this point. Sorry. Um, so it was Lucas Engel with a goal. But I want to analyse this goal in a little bit more detail because there were a number of things that went wrong in the build-up to this. So first of all, their goalkeeper is able to play a pass to someone who is unmarked uh, in the centre circle. So that's mistake number one. That should never happen. And I totally understand the way that Edwards is trying to play. We are going to be more open. I'm okay with that. But something like that shouldn't happen. So player finds himself uh, unmarked. He's able to then drive. Um, they then create an overload down the right-hand side in which Isaiah Jones up against Jake Cooper is never going to happen. Then what happens is, is for me, the two players are... Probably more Joe Bryan uh, that needs to take responsibility for this one. Um, what happens here is Joe Bryan doesn't follow his man, doesn't track his man. The overlap's created down the right-hand side. Joe Bryan's man is free in the box. He cuts it back. And then whoever was meant to be marking um, Engel at the back post, which I believe was meant to be Ryan Longman looking it back, doesn't follow their man Um It looks like Longman and Honeyman kind of get confused as to who they're marking because Longman's with... Engel and then ends up tracking Honeyman's man. It, it, if you watch it back, you'll see what I mean. But if we don't allow the ball to be played so easily in the centre circle and Brian tracks his man, none of that happens. So it's just lapses of concentration. It's poor defending and we find ourselves 1-1. Um, at which point, around 40 minutes, I'm going to be totally honest, I went for a beer half <laughs> time. So I missed the last five minutes because I was queuing for a beer. I I've been told there was a potential foul on the edge of the box. I think it was Fleming. Didn't see it, so can't comment on it. Um, more for me. But uh, other than that, no chances of note, I believe, in the last five minutes of the first half. Uh, so, overall, half-time, we go in and the manager's got to be happy with that. He has. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a really good performance and it's very much in the vein of Leicester where... 
we are playing genuinely some of the best football I've seen. My challenge was, though, was could we sustain that? Because, yes, as I say, a lot was made around Middlesbrough, you know, how fit they're going to be after beating Chelsea and stuff like that. Mentally, they're on a massive high, though. Can we just acknowledge that? Um, and they've been on a good run anyway. And I honestly felt there was no way we would be able to sustain the levels that we did in that first half. We come out and we absolutely do start the same. We, we start the same in terms of how we, we, we want to try and play. And it was very front foot and aggressive. Um, a couple of good chances. Um, the, 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 the one chance I recall vividly was, to be honest, it was a half a chance, but Watmore created it. And this summed up Watmore. Because the ball gets played over, what more? Back to goal, brings it down on his chest, then flicks it over his head to beat a defender. He's through on goal, and then his shot is terrible. And listen, I love Duncan Watmore, as you can see behind me. Got his shirt. Love the guy, um, and I think he's a super player. And it, and if I'm being honest, I think if he didn't have the injuries he had with his knees, I think he'd be playing at a, a lot higher level than he is with us. But he, at times today, would do something outstanding and then fluff his lines at the end. And what more, as much as he brings, he gets the team up the pitch, he, he teams back off him, he can create something out of nothing. He needs to start adding numbers to his game for me. Um, and he'll know that. He'll know that. Um, and the fact that yesterday, what more completed 90 minutes, which I can't remember the last time he did, for me, tells you, how thin we are in numbers. Um, but we have another chance with Watmore. Again, um, I think he's put through one-on-one, -on -one, but, it, you know, he's running out of puff and the defenders get back. Uh, and then another Middlesbrough score a goal at a critical time. I think it's just, just before the hour mark. There's nothing on. There, there, is no, there is no reason or way in which we should be conceding from this situation. So ball is pumped forward. He's going straight to Joe Bryan. Joe Bryan has got a few options. He can take a step back, bring it down, chest it, and we carry on. Or he can nod it back to the goalkeeper. I don't know what he's thinking, but he softly headers it straight into the path of Isaiah Jones. I was very impressed with Isaiah Jones for any Middlesbrough fans that are listening. I thought he was uh, probably your best player yesterday, to be fair. Um, he was. Uh, he looked like the eyes of Isaiah Jones of old because I know he hasn't necessarily uh, been on that kind of form recently, but I thought he was excellent. Um, in the straight into the path of Isaiah Jones, he's one on one with Sarkic and buries it. Good finish. Um, no, no fault for, for Sarkic there for me. Um, and they're two one up. And the thing is, is that an observation yesterday, which. Considering our form recently is quite telling. Whenever we conceded, even after the first goal, the players like they look quite beaten. I I, I don't know. They're I don't know how this group deals with setbacks. I think is what I'm saying. I think without a shadow of a doubt, the camaraderie between them is fantastic. You can see they're fighting for each other. They're giving everything. Um, and by the way, in terms of they're giving everything. I was, a, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit disgusted yesterday. At the end of the game, for those that did stay to the end of the game, there were a lot of boos and they weren't aimed at the referee. The referee did get booed when he walked towards the uh, walked towards the tunnel. But I don't get how you're booing the players from yesterday. I'm sorry, I, I just don't get it. They, 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 they gave everything. There, there is no way this group is not giving everything they can. Um, and in my opinion, with... A little bit more rubber to green and some laps, and you know, as I say, take out these lapses of concentration. We win com quite comfortably yesterday. Um, I think a draw was probably a fair result on the balance of the game. And at Middlesbrough fans, I'd be interested to hear what you think. But I don't really think you did enough to deserve three points. I think you won the second half, but we we won the first half. I think a draw would have been a fair result. But anyway, um, I'm going off on a tangent here. So it's two one, um, and then we make some substitutions. So. This, Edwards is learning his trade, okay? And I'm no expert, but I personally think he got the substitutions wrong. Um, Longman was having a super game.
stay on the right hand side. I also thought Danny Mack was playing well, and for what it's worth, I thought Zian Fleming was playing pretty well. Now I don't know why he took Zian Fleming off. He may have had an injury, okay? Um, and if he did, that's fine. Zian didn't look pissed off that he was coming off, which would suggest there was a reason behind it. So that's fine. But the problem I've got and where I think Joe Edwards messed up was Longman was having a really good uh, influence down the right-hand side. That was their weak link. You know, down, the, down their left-hand side, they've got Isaiah Jones and Luke Ayling, who um, obviously is their new signing, was, was, was quite impressive. So, you know, if I, I get bringing on Norton Cuffey to keep the energy levels up on their right-hand side. But then he went to a back four and took Danny Mack off. And it just... Norton Cuffey didn't get forward halfway near as much as when he was playing on the, in, in a five. That nullified our, our effect down the right-hand side. And then Longman already touched the game on the left. So I think that was... I don't disagree with the personnel changes he made, but in the way in which he then changed the formation, I think it, it, it actually took the sting out of us. And I don't really remember us creating too much in the last 10 minutes. Um, we go, we try and go for it and we put Cooper up top. And then that is when they get their third. I don't read too much into the third. I think the ball, you know, is, is kind of lumped forward. Harding hesitates. Probably if he didn't hesitate, he might have got there. Don't know. Um, but then Marcus Force, to me, and I tweeted this yesterday, shows us the difference. Marcus Force has been out injured for quite some time. He comes back in and almost with his first touch, Super finish in the bottom corner. Um, he, he has no right from that angle to hit it as well as he does. So, you know, credit to him, credit to Middlesbrough. They they go 3-1 up, absolutely flatters them. And if I'd be very surprised even to find a Middlesbrough fan that thinks that 3-1 didn't flatter them. The last goal is a non-event for me. Um, and then we huffed and puffed, but we didn't really create anything too clear-cut. And we lose the game 3-1. Uh, as I've already said, for me, I think that's probably a draw, that game. Um, you know, I think our dominance in the first half, we should be scoring at least twice. I don't really like to base analysis on XG, um, but I think I, I, I've looked at the XG and different websites are reporting different things. So it's a, bit, a little bit difficult to draw a conclusion but I guarantee you whatever the correct XG for yesterday was, it certainly wasn't Mill 1, Middlesbrough 3. But, you know, we can't, as Edwards said after the game, you can't keep playing well with not winning. That's not good enough. What I would say is, it's genuinely, I, I look forward to yesterday. And as much as I'm talking here about a 3-1 loss, I still feel quite optimistic. It's a very different feeling to under Rowett. And that's not to discredit the work that Rowett did and the consistency he had, but the club has got a very different feeling about it at the moment. Um, there's quite clearly some things going on behind closed doors. I think you probably know what I'm referring to that may or may not be impacting on the players. I hope not. Um, the, the, the players and the fans and the manager, those three for certain, seem to be all pushing in the same direction, which is fantastic. So I think, look, I think we're... I think we've got more than enough to stay up. I think that the changes we've seen in the last month suggest that. But we, with the injuries mounting up, I feel like we do need one or two bodies just to make sure. Um, and I really hope that the club are trying to do that. But who knows? January is a very difficult window. Yes, I'm disappointed we've not done any business as of yet. But I also don't want us to make stupid decisions and bring in the wrong players. I think we need a striker. I think yesterday shows you where a lot of the chances fell to Watmore, admittedly not Nisbet, but I think the right striker playing in the right way of our system. Um, and I think, again, it could be a very, very different outcome. I think we need a centre forward. Um, you've got two centre forwards in Nisbet and Bradshaw. Obviously, Bradshaw's injured at the moment. But I think Bradshaw... And I was having a really good conversation with uh, fellow podcaster um, Ben Green about this earlier today, that Tom Bradshaw has evolved into a player that can play in a one. He's better off the ball than Nisbet. He's hold up players better. Neither of them got a great first touch, but Nis uh, sorry, Bradshaw's is better. And he's not a bad finisher, giving him the opportunities. But he is ageing. 
I think he's out of contract at the end of the season, so it'll be interesting to see what the club do. Nisbet, for me, is much better technically. You know, he went on an amazing run in the second half for a bit about four players. Like, he, he's, he has a lot of technical ability, and I think he's probably a better, better finisher in terms of, you know, in-the-box type predatory striker than, than Bradshaw. But he doesn't, for me, at the moment, do enough off the ball and hold up play to play in a one at the moment. And Ben made a really good point to say that if Edwards is here in the, was here in the summer, would Edwards have signed Nisbet? And I don't think he would have done. I don't think he's his sort of striker. I think a mobile target man, a Josh Coburn, didn't play for Middlesbrough today. Uh, a George Hurst, obviously a key for more, but I think that ship has sailed. I think that's what we need. And I think you'd see some big differences. Um, even the lad Morgan Rogers up front from Middlesbrough, they were quite a big physical side. He, Middles, Morgan Rogers had a good game in some things and other things like you, you look like you can't hit a, you know, uh, <laughs> he, at times he, he, he come across like he, he honestly, I think he had one shot and it went, you know, almost out for a, a throw in. Like, but he's got some of the raw attributes that I think we would be looking for in a centre forward. But anyway, so to rate the players, uh, Sarkic, I don't think it was a fault for any of the goals, but there's still some question marks on his decision making. I don't know whether, you know, he's played under 100 games and he's 26. And I don't know whether that's part of it and we just need to give him some time. Like I said, not a fault for any of the goals, but there's some times where it doesn't necessarily fill me with confidence. Um, the back three, the three centre-backs. So um, I've gone for a joint man of the match today and one of them was Danny Mack. Danny Mack had a very good game, in my opinion. Um, I thought he was, his positioning was superb. Um, he didn't really put a foot wrong, to be honest. Good tackles, won a few headers. His distribution was pretty good. And maybe that is the right position for him because he he gets forward, Danny, but his final end product has never been great. Maybe playing on the right side of a back three could be his position. I know he's not the tallest, but... In a back three, that's kind of okay. Yeah, he might get targeted by a tall man at times, but I thought he was great yesterday, I have to say. And I, um not quite sure where he got taken off. But yeah, I thought he was good, Danny Mack. Um, Wes Harding, for me, I don't know. I don't want to make a knee-jerk reaction, but I like Wes a lot. I really like him. Um, but I think when Hutch come back into the side, you can see the difference. And now he's out the side again. Again, it's only a couple of games. I think you can see the difference again. Um, I think Wes in a back three is okay. Um, but I think in a back two, in a, in a centre-back pairing, I think at times he can be a bit exposed. I don't know if I'm being harsh. don't know you tell me. But um, I like him. I'm glad we signed him. He's been very useful. He's popped up with some goals. He's had some really good performances. But I think there is probably a reason as to why he's never played top, top end championship for, for his career. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's that's my my opinion on him. Cooper has to score that goal. Jake has to score that goal. Uh, and things are different. I don't think his overall game was bad at all. Um, but um, he needs to score that goal. Joe Bryan. Well, when the game was 2-1 to them, you could easily have said it was Joe Bryan 1, Joe Bryan 2, because he scored the goal. And then probably the first two goals are probably his fault, to be honest. Um, and he is it's such a shame because going forward, he had a fantastic first half, Joe Bryan. Um, he was really, really good. And you can tell the quality he's got. And if we keep him fit, he will win us more points than he loses us. But unfortunately, yesterday... He has to take the blame. And that and that's it. That second goal, there is absolutely no one else that can take the blame from that other than him. Uh, the two centre midfielders. So I thought both were quite good, um, to be honest. I think that they were both very, very busy. I felt like George Honeyman tired towards the end. And against a, a team, you know, Johnny Housen has played so many um, minutes recently and he's a lot older. Uh, and, and I felt that George Honeyman was the one that tired. I don't know if he got injured at the end or he went off a cramp. Um, what I liked about George Honeyman, and I've checked the stats on this, is the amount of forward passes he makes. So he's always looking to try and get the ball forward. Um, and then Honeyman is usually the one that presses higher as well. 
I think he's been brilliant in there. And I think his performance yesterday was broadly in keeping. But I do think he did tie towards the end. Billy Mitchell, I thought, had a fairly good game as well. I actually saw a tweet from a Middlesbrough fan saying how they thought he was outstanding yesterday. And I've seen some of our fans say he was poor. I think he was, I wouldn't say he was outstanding. I don't think he was poor. I think he was pretty good. I thought he, um, a number of times, he was driving forward, which I like to see. Uh, he created an opportunity in the first half through receiving the ball back to goal, turning and playing it forward. Um, the only thing I would say with Billy Mitchell is I'm not criticising him. I'm just saying the one thing I would want to see a little bit more of is Honeyman completes a lot more forward passes than Billy Mitchell does. So I just want to see Billy play the ball forward a little bit more. But his overall game yesterday, I thought he was really good. Um, and then the front three, I thought Fleming had a great first half. I really did. I mean, the assist... They say it's his assist. In reality, it wasn't, but it will go down as a Zim Fleming assist. But I thought he was really good in the first half. Some really nice link-up play between him, Watmore, Nisbet and Brian. Um, I thought it was good. I, I don't know if he tired towards the end, whether he's got an injury. Not sure what's going on, but I thought um, he was good. Watmore, I've talked about, he kind of just, oh, he does some things. He's like, wow, what a player. But then at the end, there's the, the end product's not there. He'll know that. And I think if we can get a little bit more end product from him, he's super. He does look fitter. It's the first time he completed 90 minutes in a long time. I think probably because he had to. Um, and he'd have wanted to do more yesterday against his former club. Um, but maybe yesterday showed us why he's no longer with them. Because as good as he is, the end product's just not there at times. Um, I've skipped Ryan Longman. Ryan Longman uh, was my other joint man of the match. I thought for the first 60 minutes until he got moved to the left-hand side, he was superb. He really, really was. He was always an outlet in the first half in particular. He tried to get the ball forward. He, he ran at them. The only thing with Ryan Longman is his final ball isn't great. And I think, again, if he was, Hull would probably have kept him. Um, I think he's got a great attitude. I think he... You can tell he fits into the group really, really well. He's a good age. Um, is right wing back his position? I would say it probably is. I, I, I like him a lot more there than I do in a front three. I don't think he's. I, I don't. I don't think he's. He's a front three player. So I, yeah, I thought he was good yesterday. I really do. I thought he was very good. So my two joint men of the match, men of the match, were Danny Mac and Ryan Longman, and then Kevin Nisbet. So I've already spoken a bit about him, but um, I felt. Yesterday, he again, he showed that he clearly has, I, I, but I never bet on Millwall, ever. But that's how optimistic I am at the minute. And I bet on Millwall to win yesterday and Nisbet to score because I just had this feeling. And he didn't really have a clear-cut chance yesterday. And I was having a bit of a debate with a few people on Twitter after the game yesterday. And I think that Absolutely, you can say we're not creating chances for him. But the, the thing is, we did create a lot of chances yesterday, but not many of them fell to Nisbet. And whose fault's that? I don't know. You know, I think at times yesterday, like Longman put a great ball in the second half. And it, if Nisbet had anticipated it, he'd have got there and maybe, you know, scored and even acknowledged that himself. I want to see a bit more from Nisbet. I want to see a bit more intelligence off the ball. And I want to see a little bit more work rate from him. He has improved. There's no doubt in that, but I think he's capable of more. And I think we probably can't judge Nisbet until he's had a full preseason where he's fit and we he gets used to the way of playing under Edwards. But at the moment, I'm not so sure. The substitutes, and I'll round up, I thought, unfortunately, they were pretty ineffective because Norton Cuffey started to be effective and then we played him at a right back and he wasn't able to get forward. SA... I didn't mention him last week in terms of sub because I didn't think he had an impact. And it's kind of the same this week. He didn't have an impact. Now, there's two sides to this. One is he's coming on with 10 minutes. What do you expect a kid to do? I understand that point of view. But the other point of view is you've got to, you've got to grab these, you know, these opportunities. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, but would love to see a little bit more of him. Um, and then the other sub, who was it? Denor. Looked okay when he come on. Obviously, he's going to be a bit rusty, but um, he's got that class as a need to, to to be able to to get through it. So look, I'll leave it there because I've rattled on for ages. Disappointing. Um, little bit of a reality check, but 
I think you have to give credit to Middlesbrough in terms of the way that they didn't panic. I thought they defended very well in the second half and they were ruthless. They took their chances. Lapses of concentration from us, we gifted them at least two of the three goals and we didn't take our chances. And that's the big difference. And that's why Middlesbrough now find themselves seven points off uh, above us when in reality, if we'd have beaten, we'd have gone with a point. So that's this league for you. But anyway, look, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And um, yeah, where we move on to QPR, who have just lost at home to Watford 2-1. So they're going to be right up for it because if they don't and they don't get a result against us, they're um, they're in uh, they're in deep shit, to be honest. And it would be lovely to put another nail in their coffin. So enjoy the rest of it. Thank you very much for listening as always. And uh, yeah, bye for now. <laughs>